Let's jump right back into action. Firstly, it is time to make the top pretty with this big aluminum angle which will make a smoother transition between the edges and the glass. So we marked the correct length and started to cut it with a very simple saw. And since the aluminum was kind of thick, it took quite some time. And don't forget to deflash the edges, because those are really sharp and can seriously hurt you. Then we used a lot of acrylic to glue the angles to the edges. And yes, acrylic is not the best solution, but it works fine for me. Time to make the light diffusion even better. So I got myself a big piece of cardboard, which was at least as big as the top shelf. I did some basic measurements and sliced it so that it would fit perfectly underneath the wooden square, right above the matrix. And don't forget to paint it white on both sides, because the white color will reflect a lot of the LED light. We placed it carefully underneath the frame and finished this part off with a good amount of hot glue. But since we still had this aluminum angle laying around, we decided to put a lot of acrylic on it and glued it to the bottom of the cardboard. I have to say this was a good decision, because it looks really nice and you don't even notice that ugly cardboard anymore. Now here's a problem. What happens when the matrix is turned on in this development state of the bar? Well, it lights up properly, but it also lights up a lot of the back of the bar, which is something I do not want. As a result, I bought myself this chipboard, which was custom sized just for me, for only 12 euro. That's a nice price. I started to paint the whole thing white, but only one side this time, because nobody will see the inside of the bar anyway. Then I started to rub out the main switch and the potentiometer, which I glued there before. Because, you guessed it, how the hell should I use them when a piece of wood is between me and them? And yes, I destroyed them during the process, because I'm such a genius. After that, I had to build a simple trick to secure the chipboard to the back of the bar, and also be able to get to the matrix to repair it, or something like that. So I started to make four small wooden cubes, and mark the same position on all of them. And it's not specific, you can choose your own position of the mark. Then I drilled a hole just big enough to fit one neodymium magnet inside, and once I was finished with that, I used a drop of hot glue to secure the magnets inside the holes. And make sure that the polarity of all the magnets are the same. It makes things easier later on. Now it is time to modify the chipboard. So I got myself these nice looking chrome handles, and I started to determine a nice spot for them. Then I used my drill to pre-drill the holes. And not too deep, because I really did not want it to drill into my floor. While we are at the subject of pre-drilling, I also marked the positions for my switch, potentiometer and push button. And of course, pre-drilled the holes for all of them. Afterwards, I drilled the complete holes for the handles and started to secure them with screws. And they work really good. Now it is time to drill the holes for the LED strip parts. And with such a thick piece of wood, I recommend a long push button. Otherwise, it will not stick out the other side and you cannot push the button. Obviously. I secured all of those with a good amount of hot glue and soldered wires to all of those pins. And shrinking tube is recommended, but I forgot it. For beauty reasons, I also recommend a really nice looking knob for the potentiometer. Now, how to connect the wires you may ask? Well, the plus 5 volt wire connects to one side of the main switch, while the other side connects to the 5 volt input of the PCB. And I'm kind of embarrassed about the push button, but the PCB is already glued to the wood, so my only option was to solder the wires to the visible pins of the push button on the PCB. I know, I know. Please leave your insult in the comment section. Moving on to the potentiometer. Those wires connect to the terminals how it is described in the schematic. Nothing special here. And we are done. Now we need to go back to our little trick to secure the chipboard. So I glued the four wooden cubes in each edge of the visible frame. Then I measured how far they are located from the sides and marked those positions on the back side of my board. And again I drilled four holes for four magnets in the plate and secured them without glue. I think you should now get how this trick works. The magnetic force of the magnets is actually strong enough to hold the chipboard to the bar. 
and with a bit of force you can always remove it. Finally, we can end this project by cutting out a small square with my saw, where I can feed my power wire through. And the LED bar is done! If you're interested in the matrix, then don't be sad, the videos for it are on their way. But I hope you liked this project so far. If so, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share this video and don't forget to subscribe to Great Scott. Stay creative and I will see you next time!